Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie Gamolka, Auction.com correspondent. We're here with our continuing coverage of CrimeCon throughout the weekend, and I'm joined with the one and only Nancy Grace. Nancy, it's so nice to meet you and be able to speak with you. Well, I'm just happy to be here, and thank you for having me. Ah, and I also want to say thank you to Oxygen, my new TV home, because um, I'm just thrilled with the new show, Injustice. We've been working so hard on it, and I'm so proud of it. And uh, actually, my children are here today buzzing around because they've been working on the show with oh me. Oh my that's so amazing. Thank you guys for all being here. That's so great, you have the whole crew with you. Yeah, we're so <laughs> excited to have you join the Oxygen family. You know, you've had so many different shows. You're the queen of true crime. What's gonna be different about um, Injustice with Nancy Grace? Well, you know what's different, and I really love this about Injustice. When I was doing CNN, HLN's program, we would hear breaking news sometimes on my way to work. And I'd go, okay, we gotta cover that. I'd call in and go, this is what we have to do tonight. Now I get some lead time. I get to really dig in to the cases, really study them, really investigate, speak to the players, spend a lot of time preparing an analysis and digging for the truth of the story. And sometimes it's not just like that. Hold on, John, you gotta take this. I gotta <laughs> swing my arm around, thank you. That's the one of the executive producers I just gave my coffee to. Um, you have to be able to, it's like trying a case in front of a jury. You don't just do it like that. You prep it, you work it, you find out the truth, you speak to everyone, you go to the crime scene, you dig deep to find the truth. It's not always easy. And that's what I love about injustice. I have a chance to go so deeply into the crimes, to get the background, to go DEFCON 4, and really find out what happened. Mm -hmm. We're so excited for that to come I to Oxygen. Too. You know, there, one of the cases that was mentioned is the Pam Vitale case, and there's been some updates with the juvenile system in terms of, um, you know, if they were tried as, juveniles tried as adults, they weren't eligible for parole. Now there's been some reforms. What do you think about the updates of um, the man convicted, Scott Dulesky, in that Are case? Are you referring to the man that murdered Pam Vitale? Yes, he was convicted. Daniel Horowitz was and is a longtime friend. I had just been with him and his wife Pam before she was murdered. And that case put not only Daniel Horowitz, but me as well, to the test. It was very, very difficult. If you could have seen the crime scene that I saw after Pam was murdered, you would not want this guy out on parole. You don't want that. You don't want to look at your kitchen window and see his foot coming through it. That's what I think about that. He needs to stay behind bars. You know, in, in, on, on another level, just talking about some more recent cases as well, you know, there's a constant cycle of shock when we see a case like Chris Watts. Um, but we've seen Scott Peterson, which we know you've covered. We know that most um, female victims, there's an intimate partner violence there, or that's what maybe led to them being murdered. You know, why do you think we're still shocked by so many of these types of cases? I think that crime is as shocking now as it was at the very first murder with Cain and Abel. And I remember trying so many cases, and I would look over at the defendant in court. I wouldn't let the jury see me looking at him, but I would be looking at him. And sometimes it didn't fit together. Like you see this clean cut, like Scott Peterson, or who did you say, Chris Watts? Chris Watts. <laughs> Let's talk about Chris Watts. He had it all, right? He's got this gorgeous wife, Shanann. He's got the children, Bella and Celeste, beautiful. They always wanted a boy. They're having baby Nico. He's on the way. Beautiful home. Honey, when I looked in the house, they even had um, the same lamps that I have in one of our bedrooms. And I looked and looked and looked until I found that lamp. Those details. Uh, where was it? Don't tell me. Oh, Pier 1. And I looked at her home and it was so beautiful. She had spent so much time decorating it. And if you look at uh, the children, Bella and Celeste, they were always turned out beautifully. What I'm saying is it looked like a postcard. 
it, it, it was perfect. And so when you look at somebody like Chris Watts in court, this picture perfect setting, it's hard. It's like the mind is tricking the eye. You see one thing, but the evidence tells you something very different, that he, in fact, is a cold-blooded killer that killed his own children. So I think that's the fascination. It's like trying to put together a Rubik's Cube, and you, you, can't, make, you can't sort it out in your head. Yeah, and it feels like we're in this kind of wave of true crime resurgence where, you know, victim advocacy is really at the forefront, a lot of documentaries, but do you think a case like Casey Anthony, would that ever go away from the public view? Top Mom Casey Anthony is never going away from the public view, and I'll tell you why. Because of Top Mom Casey Anthony. As long as she's alive, she's going to be pulling one shenanigan after the next. And it's, it, it's still uh, an open wound for me because I think of Kelly Anthony, two-year-old Kelly. That's what that case was all about, not about Top Mom. And I think about her and how old she would be right now, uh, getting ready for a senior prom tonight, maybe. I mean, I don't know. But that's what I think about. So that case will never go away for me. And of course, she keeps it in the news by doing things like showing up at a bar wearing hot pants, asking guys to uh, have drinks with her. You know, it just, it just never ends. That's exactly what she was doing while Kelly was missing. You know, so some things never change. We're all excited to see your panel here tonight. It's going to be live streamed um, at 6.45, and it's tied to the new show, Injustice with Nancy Grace. But I want to ask you, you know, what's your favorite part about coming to an event like CrimeCon? Well, I feel like I've come back home. Hmm. And when I'm around so many people that are here right now that care about crime and care about solving crimes and care about justice, and what justice can be, and injustice, which is the title of the new show. It's not fake. This is not some Hollywood talking head. These are people that really care about our life's work, which is seeking justice. And I don't know, it's kind of a um, blood sisterhood where everybody joins together. We all talk about the same cases. We all have ideas about the same cases. Um, and we care about the cases. It's not just a news story, which was a really hard thing for me to get used to when I got into the TV business, was I am a crime victim and have been prosecuting crime so long. But for so many people in the business, it's just a story to get ratings. That's not what it is. These are real people with real problems and real cases that need to be solved. And I think that's why so many people come to CrimeCon and come to Oxygen. Yeah, it definitely feels like a place where justice can be seen. Yes. Uh, you know, and also, you, jumping off what you just said, a lot of people don't know your backstory and what led you into this career path. Can you talk about that and what happened? Yes. I was studying to be a Shakespearean English professor and it was shortly before my wedding when my fiance was murdered. And um, I dropped out of school. And at some point, I went back to school. Finally, they let me back in to go to law school to become a felony prosecutor. And that is how I ended up in the law. I had never planned to be a lawyer. And I had never planned to be on TV, of all things, never. I mean, I grew up on a red dirt road. My grandfather dug the well in our backyard. A lot of times the water was red, <laughs> but we drank it anyway. So no, I had never e had any idea that I would be on television. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the path has led you here. Um, and, and you know, we're thankful for Well, it's not just that. a path. I mean, it's the Lord, because I would never have made it on my own. Impossible. Mm -hmm. And I love that you have your family here. If you're like, you really oh, yes. feel supported. Now, my, my, Husband is gone. No, I haven't murdered him yet. <laughs> My children have run off to see a canine exhibit. Oh, yeah, That's the so canine. They're more interested than mommy, okay? I don't know That's where they so went. Funny. That's so. so funny. Yeah, but I know I love um, your connection with your kids. You post about the twins all the time, which is so great. So many people are, um, they always ask the question of, you know, it's such kind of tough material to work with every day is, you know, hanging out with the kids. Is that kind of your distraction sometimes to get away? Well, the children, um, are more than just a distraction in that sense right, because right. after Keith's murder, 
for so many years, I just couldn't be happy. I could not be happy. I would sabotage every chance of happiness that I had, one way or the other, I would destroy it because I didn't want it. And all I wanted to do was try cases and put bad guys away and nothing satisfied me. It was like insatiable. Then when I had the twins, I didn't want them to have a bad mommy. I didn't want them to have a mommy that wasn't happy. And I knew I had to change my life. And I don't think if it hadn't been for the twins, I would have ever been happy. Well, thank God for them. I'm so glad that they're here with you today. Um, you know, on a, on a lighter note, so we've been asking people which oxygen talent they would call if, you know, they were in jail, they were oh, booked. That's a, that's a tough one. Which oxygen talent yeah, would so I call So we have on? Nancy Grace, there's Paul Holes, there's Lonnie Coombs, there's Craig Melvin. You know, Melvin. I've been thinking about this. I mean, look at them. There's so many. But I, I got to tell you, and I'm not picking favorites, okay? <laughs> it's like picking between your child, which one do you like the best? Which they always think the other one is the favorite. <laughs> I would have to go with Paul Holes. Oh, why? And I'll tell you why. <laughs> because if he could crack the Golden State Killer case, he could crack my case and prove I'm innocent, which I am, okay? So I think I'd have to go with him. That's amazing. That's incredible. So well, we'll be live streaming our panel here at 645. We're extremely excited for Injustice with Nancy Grace to premiere on Oxygen in the coming future. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> premiere on July 13 there we at go. 6 p.m. Eastern. Tune in. Drop the mic. Not really. <laughs> well, in a way, let's do that. Um, so, well, you got to tune in at 6.45 for the live stream central time here. And tune in on what date? July 13, people. For 071319. That's good. Set your DVRs now. Set a date with your friends. We'll have a Facebook no, party whoa, to watch. Whoa. I want you to be in front of the TV, front of the TV with, with me your friends. and the twins and our popcorn. <laughs> That's what we'll be doing. We'll all be doing that together. We're so excited to have you here on the Thank Oxygen you. family. <laughs> Thank you so much. Stay tuned for more updates.